Hi everyone and welcome back. Just gonna do a big update on my TTO2 drift car here. As you can see, my last big update was I uh, changed the suspension arm to the TTO2 Type S style from, but I used the Eagle Racing version, which is slightly better and cheaper because it comes with, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. It comes with the CVDs, drive shaft and yeah, if you can get it, um, I definitely highly recommend you get it. Anyway, the updates uh, that I'm going to do is that I'm going to change, I'm going to change the suspension mount to the Type S adjustable suspension mount. So this is pretty much like this thing here. So you need two of them to go in the front and back, and this is going to go right here, right here like that. There's also a rebound stopper that you can get. The rebound stopper is this thing here. It's pretty much to limit, you know, how much droop you can get. But these are like about $10 and they're a bit expensive. You probably only need one of them if you want to be cheap and just put like, I don't know. But you don't really need the metal. I kind of regret getting them. But anyway, I just thought, why not? And another thing I'm getting is to replace the carbon damper stay. The, the TTO2 Type S carbon damper stay is a lot better. I'll show you why. Um, oops, right here. And open this up. Now the TTO2 carbon damper stay, especially the rear, has a lot more you know settings option up here rather than the uh, the normal TTO2 type and then also has the um, the ball mount here so instead of instead of using that ball mount it's going to be here and also the position of the ball mount is important it's much lower and I'll show you the front so I got the front one here as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell these old ones and the front one's actually quite similar to the original. So you can see the 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 rear ball mount it's much lower than the front one. This will affect the um the roll center of the car and roll center is like another thing you really need to learn about is very important for drifting it plays a huge effect by standard the, the roll center of the TTO2 is too low in my opinion and I intend to raise it you can see it's too low because uh, watch this um, can't really feel it but but this this wheel here and this wheel here will go it kind of gets pulled inwards a little bit and and that kind of inward pulling you can see that so you push it to the center yeah so that inward pulling creates a resist resistant to the um to the suspension same with the front i believe so you push them together and it, yeah, it kind of stops the suspension from working, um, you know, as smoothly. You know, I'm not that big of an expert. There is like, you know, when it comes to drifting, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, over time, that's, you know, what I kind of, you know, come to realize. Um, there's so many different way of doing things with, with you know, with drift, drift setups. And yeah. I mean, even if your car is set up completely wrong, you can still drift well. It's all like an acquired taste on how you want to set up your car. So, you know, this is just my opinion. And I think this, the roll center of this car is too too low. And with these things, it'll make it easier to adjust it. I'm not sure if this one, this one's probably the same as the original one, but I got it anyway, so. It'll match the front and rear. I actually probably should have um, just got two of these rear one instead. 
um, so that the front one have just as many um, settings. I mean, the downside of this is that uh, the position of the body mount will be a bit higher because it goes above it. Anyway, that's one thing. And what else have I got? And to switch, and to in order to use these uh, suspension mount, let me grab the manual. So the suspension mount is like this. And the main reason Now the main reason I got the the Type A suspension mount is to so I can adjust the the skid angle. So you get a negative skid angle, no skid angle, or positive skid angle. Um, so what I'm going to do is that it's good to have a I think it's good to have a positive skid angle. So this will make this will decrease the traction on the rear. And then you'll add a negative skid angle on the front to give it, you know, more traction at the front. Uh, we'll induce a, for a 50-50 drift car, the body to shift weight a lot better. And you can see here, that's, that's how you fit it in. So the thing about this, that uh, I needed this part here and here to so that it's a ball joint and that allows it to move you know up and down and left and right and and it didn't come with that so i actually found and it was quite expensive to purchase them as a as a part um, from tamiya and i found that buying this year race year racing arm pin set you can see the part number here it's much cheaper because it comes with all four four pins and and extra spaces and stuff oops I'm not making a big mess right so it comes with these this ball joint here that's all that we really need so this thing kind of replace that version there that the Tamiya has and yeah and the suspension pins as a bonus all right so i'm gonna install that and i'll get back to you right okay so after a bit of fiddling around i think i've done it i uh, managed to install it at the rear not sure if you can see but i guess it has a 1.5 degree toe in right now uh, i'm just going to offset it by one degree by using the Eagle Racing upright here. Uh, I have to adjust the bushing inside these uh, upright to make it um, the opposite. So I'll probably end up with overall 0 0.5 degree toe-in, which is okay. Uh, didn't want to go too extreme trying to counter 2 degrees toe-in with the suspension mount with a 2 degrees toe-in with the upright. And then you can see, if you can see here, um, it has a, what do you call it, a positive skid angle where the skid angle is like this, so, you know, this one here. So I have it on the lower seating. Sorry, uh, can't bend this. Enough. Anyway, I'm using... I'm using it right here at the point, lowest point here, lowest inner side. So it gives me a, a positive skid angle and hopefully that should, well, I think it should give me less rear traction at the rear without hardening the suspension and you know, I'm gonna make it more tail happy and easier to drift. And I'm gonna have to do the same thing to the front and I, you know, and it's been a success so using this year racing um, arm pin set was really handy because it came with everything I needed right I just got the damper position off and uh, you can see the difference 
between the standard TTO2 carbon damper mount and the Type S. So, you know, it has a higher body mount position, which is fine. But then the the damper position, instead of here, um, it's all the way out here. So that's a massive change. That's a massive difference. Um, we can have more of an upright um, damper mount position. So it's going to be interesting to test out. And on top of that, the uh, the camber joint position here is also quite a bit lower. It's about, I don't know what you call that, maybe, I don't know, 8 mil lower, which is considerable as well. And that will change the roll center drastically, having that damper mount right there. So that's really good. Um, so it's going to go on, oops. Actually, I did this wrong. It needs to go on like that, and I have this one on backward. I'll fix that up now. Okay, so I got the the rear is pretty much finished, and yeah. So using this position and this very innerward position on the lower suspension mount as well, um, it it does give an extreme amount of droop. Uh, which is a little too extreme. You can see the dog bone. It's just about popping off at maximum droop. And I can't really control the droop without the rebound stopper, which doesn't work with um, the short wheel base. So, yeah, I mean, these dampers are too long. Um, these are the standard about 55 mil damper I probably need to switch to uh, a 50 mil um, damper setting which is quite annoying um, because I didn't really want to spend any more money but this is the sort of thing that happens um, yeah I guess it gives me a good good reason to switch to the big bore to the super short big bore damper type and this will solve all my problems um, I can get the Tamiya super short big bore damper make this thing look really beasty and I guess I can use this damper here either sell it or use it with um, one of my other cars so yeah I didn't expect to Right, just show you an update. Um, so I just replaced the the rear dampers here with a Year Racing Big Bore Damper, which is very similar to the Tamiya um, Super Short Big Bore Damper, except it's slightly longer. The Tamiya Super Short Big Bore Damper is about 46 mil um, length, and with the Year Racing, I can get them at 50 mil length, which is um, which is good. So I replaced them. I mean, this is the old one here. This is about 55 mil length, and this one is too long. Um, so the year racing, it's um, it's pretty good. It's very smooth. Um, it does take a bit of work to get them to work as well, um, but they're much cheaper, much better value than the TRF damper. But TRF damper is the best. And you may notice I've replace the camber links here as well with the 5.8 ball similar to the Eagle Racing TTO2 I have um, yeah it looks really good makes it look really beefy and I think it moves better as well and another thing that um, that I can't do is um, try to get a better angle that I couldn't use the I really wanted to use the innermost um, right here the innermost lower suspension link here and I can't because if I move the suspension any closer it will it will hit this thing here because this suspension mount here is kind of too wide and it will connect with that so I either have to cut this or leave it as it is um, 
I really don't want to cut it because I'm going to make a bloody mess of it. It's going to look ugly. And and I guess this is probably good enough um, because I would prefer to be in a, in a closer one because it'll give me um, better roll, better body roll. Um, it'll make it softer and better body roll. But then again, it'll probably be too soft um, for my liking because this is really soft already and it's probably too soft for a uh, four-wheel drive. Um, what is it? For a 50-50. Alright, welcome back. And alright, I think I finally finished um, installing everything, which is you know the TTO2 type S suspension mount on the back and also on the front. But you can't really see it because it's covered by this bumper cover. Now I had to change the damper to the 50mm Yar Racing Big Board damper. And then I also switched the springs to uh, Rev D, Rev D springs. I really like these springs. They they have a really good feel. They're really good for um, increasing your roll because um, they they tend to have less coils and more more stretch. So I'm using the Rev D spring hard on the back, even though it's hard, it's still fairly soft. And on the front, and I'm using the medium soft on the front. Um, I tried using the soft, but soft was just too soft, and it doesn't really hold the car up very well. You can see I have to use like a ton of preload just to keep the car up. But I still want the front to be relatively soft because what we really want is like when drifting uh, with the 50/50, we want the car to tilt forward so that there's no there's no weight in the back and then they'll make the back slide a lot easier and swing the car around faster. The whole point of doing this exercise as well is to increase the the roll center. You can see the, the inner ball joint is lower at the front here and then I'll also increase it much higher here. So you want a high roll center at the back always. It'll make the car feel lighter will also make it so that you can anticipate, it makes the drift smoother. Um, because if the roll center is too low, you're gonna have um, an effect like, you know, you have grip, grip, and then all of a sudden the car, you know, loses grip and then and then, you, then you oversteer and understeer. And whereas a high roll center, it will, it will try to lift lift the back here when it rolls so when it rolls the car lifts lifts upward if the roll center is too low the car when it tilts like this it will roll downwards um, if it rolls downwards it will create you know more grip but makes it harder to control um, definitely high roll center in the in the back and you know it's the same thing with rear wheel drift cars and counter steel cars you want high roll center at the back always and on the front is uh, another thing. On the front, I generally keeping this low, lower, much lower than the rear, because I want I want the car to drip, um, to tilt forward, giving more more weight in the front and more grip at the front, so the the rear can swing easily. But with like a rear wheel drive car, you generally don't want to do that. So you know, just test. You can test and experiment by, you know, adding more spacer here. Increase it and lower it. Increase it, you get higher roll center, lower it, you get lower roll center. And you can see I'm using the innermost damping position here. So with the innermost, you know, it makes the car easier to roll. It makes makes the damping softer and and this makes the everything makes it softer but you can't you you still need the spring to be able to hold the car up because it comes to a point where the spring just can't hold the car up and on the back i'm using the second most here just to give the give it a little bit more stiffness 
but there's still, you know, there's still plenty soft anyway, because most of the white in the TTT02 is um, at the back because of the rear motor, or rear mid motor. Um, another thing I s decided to change to get, to use a fan here instead. So this is, just realize that, you know, the, the standard TT02 engine cover here supports a fan mount. And I was like, oh, actually really cool. Can put a fan there instead of the heat sink. Um, I can use the heat sink on another thing, but I believe the fan is um, probably have a better effect with cooling the motor than the heat sink. And what else? Oh, and I revert, as I mentioned in my previous video, I reverted back to the TTO2 Type S steering, and look at that. I think the steering is really good. I'm pretty pretty pleased with it. Um, doesn't get any better. Well, it can get better, but not not for this car. Yeah, so the only thing left is to show you a drift video. Uh, let's do that now. All right. Um, you can check out here. Um, see how the how the car move. There's a lot of a um, lot of body roll. Not sure if you can notice it because the suspension is very soft. Well, the suspension is soft and. And it moves really well. Like, you can actually see the car kind of dips forward when I brake and then dips back. But so far, I've been pretty happy with the result. It really feels like. It feels more realistic and and man it's um now I can do like a little bit of Scandinavian flick with it uh, which I couldn't really do before like effectively um, what I mean is like if I go uh, around this corner in, in order to get all the way down here and over there I kind of have it can't it doesn't really have enough speed so you have to do a little bit of Scandinavian flex so I'll show you uh, what I mean so from here flick and then I'm able to carry that drift through So, not sure if you can notice the body movement. This car really feels like I'm driving a counter steer car now. Um, although it still has a, you know, it still has the under steering problem, but it's not as bad as it was before because the the, the rear feels much lighter, much lighter than a 5050 like the standard TTO2. So I mean, this is still 50-50, and it handles like a counter steer. Um, you can even see a little bit of counter steering on the wheel itself, which you don't normally see with a with a 50-50. So yeah, I mean, I've been really impressed uh, with the latest mod so far, and I'm having a ton of fun with this car, which I didn't think I would. Or a TTO2. I mean, look how smooth it is. I mean, this turns out way, way better than I expected. When, when you have a lot of body roll, um, it real 
feels a lot more realistic because the car is like skidding goes and it looks a lot more realistic too let's do a Scandinavian flick again I mean this is where I always drift my car I mean I always drift it around here so I always set up my car from here I mean I don't I'm a dad so I don't have time to go to track my driveway is that this is my track so I mean if I ever go to the track I would have to change the setup but this is like an asphalt setup I guess I kind of wish that I, I kind of wish that I, um, I don't know, made the changes. I kind of made too many changes all at once. If I made the changes just one at a time, um, did the suspension mount, the Type A suspension mount on the bottom front, but I changed the suspension mount and the um, what are you, the carbon shock tower to the Type A. So there was a lot of changes there. So it's really well. And I changed the damper into the 15 mil big bore damper and the spring. So I kind of did all that at the same time. So, so it's really hard for me to tell which one made the biggest difference. But I'll try to give you a better shot. <laughs> making myself dizzy it's hard to um to film and spin around at the same time yeah i can't do it all right just enjoy the rest of the video You know, just when I thought I was finished with this vehicle, you know, with the TTO2, it's like no more. I always find something new to do with it. <laughs> I mean, what else is there to do in this car? Um, I can think of a few. That is um, changing it to a carbon set chassis or something, or um, getting an aluminium gear cover. Uh, which is nice for the bling. I don't think they'll they'll actually do anything to the handling. Um, I mean, the steering is really good. I mean, I can get more angle on steering, but it's not going to do anything because it's a 50/50. You don't need high angle steering for a 50/50, so it's kind of pointless. I mean, it would be nice, I guess to get the high angle steering oh ran out of battery all right see you next time